clean the board. Okay, we then need half a cup of onion. Now, I'm not going to pass it out with half a cup of onion. I think by the time that I've cut this onion, peeled and cut this onion, this will be half a cup of onion. So we need to get this nicely, finely diced. So you want to take the end of the onion which has the flour growing from it and that's the root end and you want to just literally, as you can see, just run the knife down try and keep as much together as possible right. and then down the other way. I don't mind different textures, I know this is meant to be a burger but it's a beetroot so it's not going to be really, really smooth. Half cup measure. So it's a generous half cup. <laughs> Lovely stuff. But I'm not going to waste that. It's going in. Don't worry. I'm a professional. I'll help you. I'll show you how you can adapt recipes to make them suit your lifestyle rather than suiting the recipe. Two cloves of garlic. You can see why the Americans use powdered garlic and things all the time, can't you? Right, so, chop that up nice and finely. Now when I was chefing, what you had to do then was sprinkle it with salt and crush it with the back of the knife. The reason why you sprinkle it with salt is so the flavour doesn't go into the board. I ever use this board for savoury cooking. I don't mind things being a bit of garlic. Because everything I have, everything I cook, has garlic in And I don't want to be adding extra salt to things all the time. In fact, I try and cook with as little salt as possible nowadays because I'm past the menopause. And all it does is swell up my joints. A cup of grated beetroot. I love beetroots. They're a fantastic vegetable. They can be sweet and earthy. You never get the same beetroot twice. I find. Peel it first just with a potato peeler. No point in prattling about and trying to be clever and peeling with anything else. Who has the time? And also peeling vegetables, peeling, chopping is therapeutic. It's good for you. As I keep saying, as I said before, we're in lockdown. If cooking is your thing, then enjoy. Don't just think about filling your face. Take every step of the recipe and enjoy. That's a nice thing to skip. Take the stalk off. These are so easy to grow as well, people. You literally just throw the seeds in the ground and they just get on with it. So, you know, be adventurous. I'm going to use a good old fashioned box grater. And if, like me, you get to the end and you just don't want to scratch your finger, then don't chop the blinking thing up. Nice and easy. Oh, the smell, a lovely earthy beetroot smell and the colour. I wish my hair was this colour. Cup of beetroot, generous cup of beetroot. Feed your soul, people. Don't limit yourself. It's food. What's the worst thing that can go wrong? As long as you, you, you know, as long as you've not burnt it to a cinder or it's you know, if you're cooking with vegetables, if it's raw, it's raw, you're not going to kill yourself, you're just going to do a bit more chewing. If you're cooking with meat and it's raw, then you're in trouble, aren't you? That can go in with the mushrooms because that's going to be fried with the mush. Good. This cookery book, uh, How Not to Die, doesn't cook with oil, it dry fries or it fries in water, which is great. So, in this case, it says here, eat, heat up a quarter of a cup of water in the bottom of the pan get the feeling my pan was hot <laughs> add the onions and garlic and this is still stir frying I'm still going to get a colour on these it's just it's without oil it can cook for about five minutes okay that's cooked nicely now that has 
all softened up. You can tell it's softened because the onions have gone clear, which is called translucent. Okay, so, and then we need to stir in the beetroot and the mushrooms. <laughs> Aim for the pan. <laughs> Such a mercy chef. Oh, a good mix through. Hissing's gone because the pan's cooled because the vegetables are cold. But it soon comes back. So we need to start with half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Any smoked paprika. And, um, it's meant to be mustard powder, but I didn't have any mustard powder, so I'm going to go for a bit of hot. I'm going to go for a bit of hot cayenne, a bit of cayenne pepper, because I like a bit of spice in my life. So, and then we need some ground cumin. I need a lot of cumin, so I buy it in a big container fulls. So half a teaspoon of ground cumin. And then I need a half a teaspoon of ground coriander. Again, I eat a lot of things like this. Beautiful. Half a teaspoon of turmeric. God of spices as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so stir all that in. If you cook spices, it brings them alive. Dried spices, whole spices. Oh, the smell! The smell is amazing. Mmm, those spices with that beetroot are bringing out the real earthiness of it all. Mmm, cook the vegetables for about four minutes. So while that's cooking, we'll get on with the second stage then. So we need to add the beans to a bowl. These are black beans that we need. A cup of black beans. They're I'm not going to be able to crush those, so I'm going to chop them. Basically, all you're doing when you're making this is you're just trying to, you just need to break the skins of the beans so that they just to get the nice pasty bit out of the middle. These are cooked. They were cooked in my wonderful mixture of water, rosemary, and then I would have put in the stalk of an onion that I've chopped off, as I say, and probably some celery trimmings, so they have some flavour of their own as well. I must admit, I do find a black bean to be a good flavour anyway. The this bean I find are your white beans, but they're excellent for taking on flavours. We need to get those in the bowl. Let's try and get them in the bowl while we'll let them cook it, shall we? Yeah. Something must have Done. Soup. Don't crash, sorry. We need to add the cooked grain. So whichever grain, so it recommends here that we have um, a cup of brown or red or black rice, teff or quinoa, drained and blotted dry. So what I've got here is cooked brown rice. So I batch cook and freeze. In this brown rice, you can see there's this little green bean. This is a pay lentil. These, you can see, they're all nicely soft. So they just break up all the time. Oh, that's coming up a treat. It's like everything. You might love cooking, but cooking might not, you know, some days you just, oh, I just want something easy. And rather than reaching for the phone and getting something which just basically isn't good for you and is expensive at the end of the day, you can just open up your freezer and find one of your lovely beetroot burgers that you've did and you can treat yourself to make yourself a pan of chips or something with them. That is looking sexy, don't you think? This is ground flaxseed. I buy in bulk, as I just said. I do a lot of cooking. I need a tablespoon of white miso. Miso is meant to be good for you. Um, it's meant to be good for helping reduce hot flushes. Well, I'm through the menopause, never had a hot flush. Is this because I eat miso? We don't know. There's nothing to compare and contrast because I've always eaten miso. Let's mash the mixture together. I'm a hand, hands on girl. Hands are the best things ever. I always wash my hands. I don't understand this why we have to be told to wash our hands. Okay, so you can 
can see that has come together quite nicely. Oh, okay. So that's definitely going to mash together. That's easy then. So to add um, half a cup of rolled oats, which have been coarse and uh, which have been blended into a coarse flour. I haven't got any oats, so I'm going to use coconut flour. It's a third of a cup of coconut flour. And then I need half a cup of ground walnuts. I haven't got any ground walnuts, but I've got ground almonds because it's that time of year. So I'm going to use half a cup of ground almonds instead. This is a quarter cup measure. And my ground half cup measure is two. So that's half a cup of ground almonds. Be a different flavour, be a slightly sweeter flavour. Walnuts aren't quite so sweet as almonds, but. This is cooking on the hoof. This is how to make things with stuff you've got. You know, I don't want to be rushing to the shops every day and then having loads of ingredients hanging around that I'm not going to use again. That's not the point of it, is it? Add that to that. Don't waste anything. We're not on TV. I'm just going to spread them out. Mix them together. Loveliness. And then on the top of that, that coconut flour does have a slight hint of coconut in it. So you've also got that background flavour of coconut. Do you know what? This looks sexy. I love cooking. Mm -mm. Do enjoy this. So that's come together lovely. That was no problem, was it? Now then, and then you need to make six pâtés. Pâtés. <laughs> pâtés. So, my push control is never the best. These aren't sticky. I would say that's probably because the coconut flour is very, as I say, is very dry and will suck anything, suck the life out of anything, mostly. <laughs> I love the fact I can see the whole bean and a big onion and right. My portion control is pants. I would rather have one big burger than I would two smaller ones. And guess what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna wash my hands. Right, it says to put these in the fridge for half an hour just to settle down. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So these have had their cooking time now. Ding dong, my singing oven. So let's stick some on a plate. Yeah, it's nice and crispy. Bits of pear, bit of apple, and a nice lot of vegetables. Oh, look at that, comes on last. You can put anything with this. I think I'm going to put some vegan vegan mayo with this burger. Let's have a look at that inside. Oh, look at all those beetroots. I can see that. Nice and hot. Let's have a taste. Mmm. Beetrooty. Beanie. And you can taste all those herbs and spices. Mmm. Yummy. Piece of potato. Mmm. Oh yeah, soft, baked, nice. Let's have some of this pepper, with a bit of this apple. Mmm. Food for the soul and for a dark November evening, without a doubt. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Lots of love.